in the heart of Yorkshire. Hello, Mr. Bowman. An unbeatable team. That way. And stop, we're going to lay you down. Hard at work, 24 hours a day. Does it count as your daily exercise? <laughs> Seven days a week. I can smell it now. It's a really bad burn. Saving lives. It might be that we need to put you to sleep oh. in order to try and sort this out. Helping loved ones. It's a shock of that. Making the community they serve better. We got your luck. You're being such a good boy. A health service treating anyone. Car door, house door. Band door. Big band door. Yes. So it's quite impressive, isn't it? And everyone. Oh, you're going to have a good luck, eh? I am a doctor. A team doing anything and everything for each other. It's just been mantled down here. I will do it. I'll get to it. Oh. 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 We're strong people in Barnsley, you know. This is Barnsley Casualty 24-7. You're absolutely all diamonds. Brilliant. We fixed it. <laughs> On shift tonight, Dr Jake Mullen. Let's have a look. All right. Dr Chris Yeoman. Peter. 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 And Sister Jo. It has got a bit busy as Barnes's walk up. So, get ready to share a shift. That way. With the team at Barnsley Casualty. It's 7 a.m. in Barnsley, and the morning team are clocking on. Hey, it's Jo from uh, A&E. Sister Jo is in charge. Were you expecting a lady from us? And she's already got a jam-packed department from the night before. Yeah, it's busy. We have 30 patients in the department this morning. We've got a few going to ward and one going to theatre. That's the thing that's just gone, actually. Waiting time's 7 hours, 21 minutes uh, already. So we'll be a little bit tight if, we've, uh, if we get any emergency now. Alrighty. But there is another emergency. There's been a serious road collision. Dr Chris Yeoman takes the lead. I think at the scene they've noticed he had a bit of abrasion to his head and quite an obvious right ankle deformity. Good morning. 62-year-old Peter has been knocked off his motorbike going to work. He's taken straight to Rhesus. Your arms cross your chest to us, Peter. We're, we're going to slide it. OK. All right. So, uh, roughly 7 o'clock, obviously, on the bike. Um, a tyre has come out the back of the van. The car in front has managed to swerve to avoid it. And Peter has the tyre has gone directly oh. into the front of the bike. And the okay, rest of the swerved. Yeah. And he's fallen onto his right hand side. He's managed to get himself up off the floor, walked to the pavement, and then when he sat down, he's realised that he's definitely actually quite a bit of pain that ankle. Yeah. Uh, no other injuries. This is his helmet. So, he's just got some scrape to the Just a scrape, yeah, yeah. okay. Once we got him on the vehicle, uh, he had some get a blood pressure drop down to 81. Thank you very much. A drop in blood pressure could indicate internal bleeding, which, if untreated, could lead to organ failure. Dr. Yeoman needs to quickly find out the extent of Peter's injuries. Do you remember the whole thing? Yeah. Your eyes, yeah. I know you scraped your helmet. Do you think you knocked yourself out? No. No. A couple of big breaths in and out. With Peter, the concern with regards to his drop in blood pressure on the way in is whether he's got an injury that we can't see, so an intra-abdominal or uh, an injury within the chest cavity. Now, gentle press on the sides. Are there any pains up in your chest at all? He's got a nasty-looking um, ankle injury, but this can distract both the patient and the clinician from any other more serious injury, so we have to follow a structure first before we come to that. Consultant Dr Sarah Keep is working with Dr. Yeoman. Straight, straight down for me. Did you feel unwell? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, these here both out, but not there. Yeah, did you feel I, like you were about to bleed? Yeah. And, straight uh, and then I rolled over and um, about sick at one point. It's a little bit of a wince on that side. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to get a scanner of your chest and your tummy yeah. in the hope that everything's okay. And as long as that ankle's got a pulse and some... He's got, he's, he's got a good pulse, yeah, it's fine. Then we'll sort that out after we've just... Do we know what's up with ankle? 
I mean, you've either broken it, dislocated it, or both. Peter's partner of 18 years, Sasha, and her sister Lisa arrive to offer support to a shocked Peter. I've done that ankle and it's never part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't drive. Don't worry about that. How do we get caravan? Need to be worrying about anything now. Just need to get you arrived, don't worry. I'm going. As Peter is taken for his CT scan to find out the severity of his injuries, there's another emergency racing into the department. It's an epileptic child, so we'll see when that, that little one gets here. They've headed straight to paediatrics with a five-year-old girl who's suffered multiple epileptic seizures and has a high temperature. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'll pop you in a few and then I'll come back and get you. All right, right. Come on, Ruby is with concerned mum Zoe and dad Hayden. So we've got Ruby. Yeah. Pediatric sister Kate is on hand. Um, and she's got epilepsy. Yeah. Any other medical conditions? No. Any medicines in the last eight hours? Ibuprofen and Carpal. And what's been wrong? Uh, she's uh, not been well since weekend. She started on a cough. And then on Monday she's had a seizure. She had rosy cheeks all week. Okay. And then this morning we've got up. She's had a seizure and she's one straight after. Okay. So I'm a bit worried. She's also got really crackly chest and she's full of bummed up snotty nose. Okay. Fevers can bring on increased seizures in people with epilepsy, so it's important. Sister Kate finds out as much as she can about Ruby's episodes. So what time did she have the seizure? This morning, yeah. 9 o'clock. And then, so that lasted for about a minute? Yeah, and then one straight after. What's the seizure like? Is it like a full body shaking or...? She yeah, likes tonic, clonic. She likes cramps up. Yeah, so she yeah. just stopped and then went straight back yeah. in? Is she normally post it till afterwards? Uh, yeah, she can't be very sleepy for about five, six hours. Yeah, is that even if she's not had any medication for it? Yeah. Yeah. I could tell that Ruby's parents were really worried about her this morning. It's a privilege for people to trust you in their most vulnerable moments, whether that's with themselves or with their child. I think you have to feel really honoured that they've come to you for that help. With a high temperature, Ruby is at risk of another seizure. It's crucial Sister Kate and the team cool her down quickly. Assessment, yeah, please. In the hub, Sister Jo is dealing with the effects of a previously very busy night. Priority is getting the patients moved that's um, already here, getting the new ones seen and getting them a plan in place and just, just trying to get a bit of flow within the trust, really. It's quite a challenging job, coordinating a department, being in charge, um, you know, delegating your staff to, to areas that are, are in need. But I was a, a registered nurse long before I was a sister, so I, I knew what the, that, that job entailed. But she's fighting an ever-increasing backlog of patients. We've still got the 31 in the department now. We had 29 when we came on. Some people have been here since the early hours, so she needs to keep them as comfortable as possible. I mean, they've been here a lot of hours, and they will have had refreshments during night, so obviously it's breakfast time, so... We, uh, we usually go around with a, a tray of uh, tea and toast at, at this time on the morning. So it's important to keep them hydrated. Do you want a tea While the team do their rounds, back over in recess is 62-year-old motorcyclist Peter, who was involved in a serious accident earlier this morning. They just bounced straight out the back of the van. Yeah, come out the back of the van and they just went straight from it. He's waiting for results after having a CT scan to check for internal bleeding. There must be a strong visor on your helmet. Partner Sasha and her sister Lisa keep him company. <laughs> I'm sure a pair of shoes is the least of your problems. I'm not having a bike again. It's got to get it fixed. 
You don't. You can go to school. It'll be a write-off, probably. No, it won't. Why, what state's it in? I don't know. After assessing Peter's x-rays, Dr Yeoman checks in on him. Peter, we can't see any other injury on your scan, OK? He may not have internal bleeding, but it's not all good news for Peter. X-rays wise, your, your wrist and stuff looks okay, your knee looks okay, all right? Yeah. Um, as you kind of asked earlier and I kind of said, you've got a quite a nasty fracture of that ankle, all right? You probably didn't need me to tell you that necessarily. Um, a couple of things we need to do. We need our, our bone doctors, we'll have to see you and we'll have to end up, end up admitting you under their team. In the meantime though, this is something that we need to kind of straighten up a bit here first. To do that, we're not going to do it while you're awake, all right, obviously, because we pull that now, you you won't let us. What we'll do is we'll give you some sleeping medicine, basically, to make you drift off to sleep for 30 seconds or so, so that we can put that in a plaster cast. Is it fractured in a few places, then? Yeah, so you've got probably three fractures in that ankle, yeah, and it's not quite in line either, which is why we need, need, need straightening up, OK, before, right. before we do anything else after that. All right. Um, you know you're supposed to change your helmet after it's had a bit of a knock, don't you? No, no, no. So you're not going to need a helmet then? No. No, right. He did, 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 did this four years ago, same thing, yeah. half past seven in the morning. Okay. I don't want, want to worry you. I'm in the back of an ambulance. I'm on my way to Binderfields. I've been T-boned off my bike. I was longer than four years. I, I was on two crutches. He was on two crutches. He broke his rib, hurt his knee. And, uh, and I said he won't have a bike after that. He's 62 years old, he's got to realise that. Um, yeah? <sighs> Not learn. I'll get, him a, I'll get him a scooter. With a badly broken ankle, Peter will have to undergo a painful procedure to put it back in place. Five-year-old Ruby has been rushed into Barnsley Casualty this morning. After multiple epileptic seizures brought on by a high temperature. She feels warm, doesn't she? Yeah. She's with mum Zoe and dad Hayden. Tickling your ear. Okay. Sister Kate has done an initial check over. So, for Ruby, this is normal for her after yeah. a seizure. Yes, yeah, she's normally just angry and asleep. Yeah, angry and out of it. Yeah. Right, so I'll fill all the paperwork in and I'll pop her in the queue to see the doctor, OK? Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Kate hands over to trainee advanced nurse practitioner Gemma. Ruby is a little girl. She's a known epileptic. She's been unwell since the weekend. Had a seizure lasting a minute on Monday. Self-resolved, didn't come to hospital. Um, and then had another one this morning lasting a minute. Stopped for a second and then went straight back into it for another minute and a half. She's both sick to and asleep now, which they've said is normal for her. Um, and I've just explained, she's still hot. That way! Trainee advanced nurse practitioner Gemma needs to figure out what's causing Ruby's illness so they can treat it before she has another seizure. Uh, My name's Gemma, I'm one of the trainee nurse practitioners. I know she's asleep, but we're right, just turn yeah. out to her back if that's all right, Dad. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay, it's okay. All right, I'll do it. But with an unwell Ruby just wanting to sleep, it's not going to be easy for trainee advanced nurse practitioner Gemma. Sorry, darling, I'm sorry, I'm feeling your tummy. Daddy's here. Daddy's here, Daddy's here. Okay, then. Did your tummy hurt anywhere? Yeah. Yeah, where does it hurt? Yeah. You don't know, okay. Can we have a little look in your ear, then your mouth? Are you sure? Come on, you need to get there. We need to find out what's wrong with you, don't we? An increase in seizures is always something I'm worried about. It's something I worry about whenever I examine a child who's come in with any type of seizure. So that's what, one reason why I don't want to upset her and cause her any stress. I've had a little listen to her chest while she was asleep. I can't hear anything. It sounds nice and clear. Okay. Uh, we looked at back the that's what I'm going to yeah, do yeah. now. Let's look in your mouth, babe. Open. I don't like uh, that. <laughs> Oh, she's got a big tonsil. Tonsil, that's just going around there, isn't it? Again. Yeah, it is, yeah. Do you think it's tonsil? 
She's got big tonsils. I can't see any spots on him, but she has got big tonsils. And oh, she's got that, bit, yeah, yeah, she's got a bit of phlegm at the back of her throat. Yeah. It's clear, so it's probably all viral. After a thorough examination, trainee advanced nurse practitioner Gemma thinks a viral infection could be triggering Ruby's seizures. Keep going with fluids. I'm just going to get some, just going to get checking on us again for a temperature. And then I'll get, I'm just going to have a chat with my boss. Ruby will continue to be closely monitored until trainee advanced nurse practitioner Gemma gets a second opinion. If Ruby has a rapid increase in seizures in a short amount of time, it can affect her brain function. Um, which is, while she's developing, we, do, we don't want that to happen. I know you're a bit cold, sweetheart, but can we just leave this off you off at top? That's it, good girl. I don't want you getting any more hotter, OK? Gloves, 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 gloves. Back over in the hub, regular volunteer Jane is starting her shift. Oh, wrong, wrong hand. <laughs> I've been away for a week, what do you expect? Back off holiday, She's ready to get to work. Took my mother away, didn't I? Teed it. First is the lost and found box. God, it Seems to be all slippers today. No. Oh. Mm. Sorry, but that's not being kept either. Mm. Good grief. Why does nobody believe any Dolce & Gabbana? Or Versace. They never leave out nice like that. What's this? Oh, that must be some sort of equipment for whatever reason, because it's it's a bit like a blow up. Um, I'm going to say a blow up doll, then I didn't mean that. Um, blow up bed or something or whatever. You'll tell me what that is, because you're a very educated man. What's yeah, it's that? A bag. No, it's not a bag. Just a bag. It's clearly a bag. Yeah, but it's got it's what's in it. Would it be something like that? Ambulances have, do you think? Yeah. Ah. Uh, extracting patients. Oh, so if I get to an ambulance crew, they might take you back to, to, to where have you? Imagine that's where it came from. Sweetheart, can I get one of your these? Because I don't want it, it's on the counter. It's. it's... <laughs> huh? It's your Easter present, it's your Easter bunny. It's expensive, it is. It is, it's very expensive. It's, a, it's a vacuum mattress. So it's one of them that you can over and sleep on at the same time. Rubbish. Hmm. What's yeah. an over? What's an over? Honestly. <laughs> it's non-stop for casualty today. More paramedics are bringing in another patient. 90-year-old Alan has been taken to Ambulance Bay 2 with a severe cut and damage to his face. I had a fall. Tripped over and hit the deck. I'm 90, which means that his legs are 90, and the same pair I've had all my life. <laughs> Trainee paramedic Maisie makes Alan more comfortable. Here you go. It's oh, a bit hot, just be careful. No, I can't. I should have to take my mask off now, can't I? You can, I need to take it off, yeah. Alan's son Gary is by his side. I got you these ginger biscuits. Oh, them's fine. Do you want me to open them for you? Yes, please. We've got three in there. Oh, well. Treat yourself. Nurse Kim comes to see him. Hi, Alan. Hi. Can I just do your blood pressure? Can I just do your blood pressure? Is that okay? Uh, again? Yeah. I haven't done it yet. You've had it done with the ambulance, but not with me. I've had it since I've been here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Huh? They, they keep telling me it's fine. Oh, well, I'll just do That's it again. That's why they keep checking these here. I'll just do it one more time. We'll double check. Yeah. Pop that in there. Thank you. So you've had a bit of a tumble. A bit of a tumble? A bit of a tumble, yeah. I must have gone down and you don't know. You all right? Got that down. Nurse Kim moves Alan and his son Gary into majors. Yeah, we're going to have a Sajar room. Oh. He's had a couple of falls, but um, he managed so far to not do any sort of serious damage to himself. But, well, pray for this. I'm running out of lives like a cat. <laughs> You're not going to lay me on that, are you? No, not just yet. Can I have a little look at your eye? Yes, of course. Is that okay? What have you been doing? I fell over. Oh, you're going to have a good black eye. Oh, I will. If that's all, I'm not bothered. 
Pressure. It's not long before Dr. Anne Roy arrives to assess Alan. Hello, my name is Anne. I'm one of the doctors here. My name is Anne. I'm one of the doctors here. Oh, yes, hi. Nice to meet you, Alan. Thank you, and same to you. How are you doing today? I've no pain. You have no pain? No, no. Okay. Have you had a look at yourself in the mirror? No. No. I don't make a practice of that one. <laughs> right, so you've had a bit of a tumble today. I did, yes. Yeah. It's important Dr Roy finds out the reason why Alan may have fallen. Can you tell me, just tell me what happened? How did you fall? I fell sideways, right. Yeah. Did you trip over something? Yeah, my feet. Oh. Okay. And did you feel any dizziness before you had the fall? Oh, no, no. No. It's just my legs aren't as good as they should be. Okay. Right. At any point did you lose your consciousness? No. No. And did you have any vomiting at any point? No. I know you sort of obviously the, the view with this eye is a bit obstructed, but with the other eye, any visual disturbances or anything well, like that? Well, this eye has got cataract. Okay. All right, my love. I think you have a quite a nasty cut at the top of your eye, okay? Uh, yes. Sir. I think it's quite deep, and because it's on your face, it might be something that we need to send you to plastic surgery for. Oh yeah. Okay. Because they're the ones who we don't want to leave a scar, so they're the ones who's going to be suturing that up. Before Alan can get his wound stitched up, Dr. Roy has to make sure he hasn't got any more serious injuries. So because you've had a hit to the face, what I need to do is make sure that there's no fractures there. Aye. Yeah. And that there's no bleed inside the brain. Aye. Okay. A scan and x-ray of his head will determine if he's sustained a bleed on the brain. At Barnsley Casualty... Mel, that lady in 14's bed's being pulled. Sister Jo has been desperately trying to get long waiting times down. But people just keep coming through the doors. We're a bit busier than we were. We've got 44 in now, but we've got a discharge a crew have just come to take some patients. But it has got a bit busier, it's just uh, Barnsley's woke up. But not only does she have to take care of the patients, she has to look after her staff too. This is the most important bit of the day, getting all the staff written down so that you know who's had the breaks. Yeah, I think I'm a bit of a mother character. Years ago, one of the, the nurses used to call me Mama Jo. You get a little red dot at the side of your name when you've had your break. That's my job. <laughs> you want to get your best out of your staff and if, if they're stressed, if they're tired, if they're hungry, then you're not going to get the, the best out of them at all. I know when I've sent them, and if they get a dot, they'll come and say, you put a dot at the side of my name and I didn't go. I'm like, tough luck. In recess, 62-year-old Peter is waiting for his badly broken ankle to be put back in place after being thrown off his motorbike heading to work. He's with partner of 18 years, Sasha, and her sister, Lisa. So I'm going to do the sedation side of things to give you the drugs to get you a bit sleepy, all right? A bit sleepy. A very sleepy, yeah. <laughs> out, shall we say, out. Dr Yeoman is in charge of his care. Obviously there's risks and benefits in everything that we do in medicine, but we always have to go through them with you, OK? Because you go to sleep, there's obviously the risk that you can fall so deeply to sleep that you stop breathing. If you do that, we supplement it. We've got all the stuff here that we can breathe for you, and that doesn't last very long, so you'll come back around afterwards. No, no, I know, but we have, we have to be honest with you. We have to tell you all about it. That's the thing. The other thing that we obviously have to say is that the aim is to sort out the ankle. Most of the time, vast majority of the time, you'll come around and your foot will be in a pot, OK, in a plaster cast. Sometimes, if we had a bit of difficulty, you might come around and it won't be, and we'll, be, we'll explain a plan from there onwards. But I don't anticipate that again, OK? Physician associate Wayne is conducting the manipulation. Hello, my name's Wayne. Hello. We're not going to test you on everyone's names, don't worry. Good job, because I failed. Yeah. The team prepare to sedate Peter. Let's see why not, because it's going to be painful. Well, it's to try to not have it painful, isn't it? <laughs> it's time to start the procedure of putting Peter's foot back into the right position. Yeah, yeah. All right, so just give you a little bit of this, just to see how we're getting on, okay? 
We're just giving 20 to start, okay. How are you getting on there? Losing. Yeah, that's okay. No, because it's got pressure under the 66. I'm that. not starting. I'm just loosening the straps a little bit. Otherwise, I might be meeting in the car park. <laughs> I'm only loosening the straps at the moment. I'll give you a little bit more, all right? And it's the first time you had the bike out, you said. First time out. To get out for a run Sunday. Yeah. But you're not allowed it anymore, is that right? Peter. Peter? Peter? Yeah. Sorry. Just, just see. Just woke up a bit with that. Did you just move it, did you? I did. Alright, yeah. You alright, Peter? Fully sedated, physician associate Wayne starts the manipulation. Is he fighting you a bit? No, no, he's killing his toes a touch. You'll feel it go if you get it. But Peter's foot is proving difficult to put back in place. That's what you want. Because I think you should feel this guy. Looking at the x ray, you'll feel this guy. Oh, yeah, he's good. No, I'm just waiting just in case he suddenly has a bit of a fight, but he's breathing nicely. Peter's foot needs to be realigned swiftly, or he could be at risk of lifelong nerve damage and will need to be rushed down to theatre. In paediatrics, trainee advanced nurse practitioner Gemma has been caring for five-year-old Ruby, who she thinks has a viral infection. Potentially dangerous for a child with epilepsy. So yeah, she's under um, Barnsley Epilepsy Nurse here and a consultant, but I hadn't seen our, one of our peds consultants for a while because they've had telephone appointments instead. And she's also under neurology at Sheffield. Consultant Dr. Liss is going to take a look at Ruby to determine what kind of infection she has. She is in number three, and it's Ruby May. This will be Ruby May, will it? Yeah. I'm on one of the consultants, so Gemma's just been telling me. So she's known about her epilepsy for quite a while, it sounds but um, Do you mind waking her up for me? It's not very nice yeah. when it's a stranger wakes her up, so do you want to wake her yeah. up for me? Hello, sausage, look at your hair. It's so long. Oh, you are still a bit warm, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, sweetie. Let's have, let's have a look, my love. You're quite long, aren't you? Are you quite tall? Yeah, like, yeah. like a dad, yeah. Right, can I have a look in your ears? I'm just wondering, can we swap over onto that chair so I don't have to snap the torch? Do you mind if I just have a little tickle of your ear? You are such a good girl. Yeah. Can you open your mouth like this for me? Uh, well done, that's super brave. Uh, I know, it's not very nice, is it? Uh, so, looking at her today, I wouldn't be giving her antibiotics. Because I don't think she, she's, she doesn't hit the criteria for antibiotics. The chances of this being bacterial are pretty low. To me. For Dr Liz, all signs point to Ruby having a viral infection, untreatable with antibiotics but Ruby's seizures still need to be resolved. I would say that you guys see how you go over the next 24, 48 hours. Please don't hesitate about coming back if you worry, because I'd much rather you came back. Yeah. Right, all right. Thank you. It was lovely to meet you both. Yes, I hope you get on all right. And then in the nicest possible way, I hope not to see you on Saturday, because yeah. everything's lovely. We're off on holiday tomorrow. Oh, are you? Where are you going? We're off to Kirtan Bay for a week. Oh, oh we're we're having a good time. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank see you, you later. Mum and Dad took Ruby home where she made a full recovery. Her epilepsy is under constant monitoring. All right, I'll let him know. Sister Jo is in the middle of a difficult shift. All right, so she's gone straight to theatre, so obviously she'll be coming straight to you from there. She's trying hard to get a long queue of patients down. It's just streaming patients to where they need to go, and obviously everybody comes here, but then if we can stream off to, to GP or to a medical estec or surgical estec or up to the wards, it takes the pressure off us. And she's faced with another issue. There aren't enough doctors in the department. One, two, three, guys. So three, short, three short. We've got three registrars short. If you're unwell, you can't come, can you, at the end of the day? 
and we get little spurts where there's quite a few staff off together because of all, we've all been together. While Sister Jo comes up with a plan, over in cubicle 17, 90 year old Alan is suffering from a three inch deep facial wound after a fall. I think I bounce. You bounce? I think, I think I'm rubber. <laughs> I think the wound says otherwise, just for now. Ah, uh, yeah. Right, I'm going to do an examination, make you do some funny movements, and yeah. then after that, probably get an x-ray of your face, OK? Yeah. 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 Dr Roy is looking for any signs of brain trauma. And just follow me, OK? Yes, I. Lovely. So, first thing I want to do is get you to give me a big smile. A big grin, lovely. And a big frown now. Very good. And puff out your cheeks for me. No, like this. Lovely. And can you push away my finger with your tongue on the inside? Not oh. it. Yeah, try yeah. again for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And on this side. Lovely, okay. And can you raise your eyebrows for me? Do you mind if I take this off so I can have a look? Oh, no, no. Take that off, I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Just going to test the sensation around the wound, OK? <laughs> Can you feel that? Yes. Can you feel that? Yes, aye. And that? Yes, aye. And yes. here. You can aye. feel all of this? Yeah. Oh, OK, that's fine. In the first place, it was a bit numb there mm. and here, mm. but not to this side. Mm. Yeah. And is it still numb there? Well, I can feel it more now. So close your eyes for me. Can you feel that? No. You can't feel it. Can you feel that? I feel your yes, yes. This? But you can't feel this? No. Okay, that's fine. I think what might have happened is you might have damaged some nerves, okay? But we're not going to know no. now. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle one of my fingers out, okay? And out the corners of your Dr. Eyes. Roy hasn't found any obvious signs of a bleed on the brain. Yeah. Oh, very strong! <laughs> but the numbness Alan is experiencing on part of his head still needs further investigation. Right, so let's get some x-rays done off your face um, and maybe a CT scan as well of your head, okay? Yeah. Um, just want to make sure that there's definitely no bleed inside. Yeah. Okay. The results of his scan and x-ray will determine if he has to stay at Barnsley. A bleed on the brain could lead to permanent brain damage. Well then, Peter. Back over in Rhesus, Dr Yeoman and physician associate Wayne are in the middle of manipulating 62-year-old Peter's broken foot back into place. So I'm just pull mainly with this hand because you're working against yourself through your pull up there. That makes sense. Yeah. Peter is under sedation. I'll give him another ten for this bit because I think he's. Finally, success. Okay, well done, Peter. Well done, well done. You woke up quickly then, didn't you? Is it feeling all right? You're just watching now, aren't you? Yeah, fair enough. Well, that's something then. I'm going to give you a little bit more time to come round, and then we'll get you round for extra after that, OK? How's your pain? Can it's all right. Feel, can you feel me touching your toe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're good. good. Right, we'll get an extra out in a minute. Mm -hmm. Peter was taken under the care of the orthopaedic team who repaired his ankle with surgery. He's back home, but still waiting to see the long-term effects. Sister Jo's over halfway through her shift. Yeah, and I still haven't had my break. <laughs> but with a shortage of doctors. Yeah, I got Dr. Bond. Uh, oh. Yeah. And a very busy department. Not looking promising. <laughs> I am getting hungry now, though, so... I'm the only one without a dot at the minute. She just has to keep calm and carry on. <laughs> Dr Jake Mullen is seven hours into his shift. Not only does he have a waiting room full of patients to get through, 
His role is also to mentor the medical students that come through Barnsley's doors. So if you take a full history examination, as we usually do, present it and walk me through it, we'll just go back and see him, is that all right? This afternoon, he's working with student Dr Stanley, whose patient is desperately in need of help. It was a bit lax anyway. So tell me about it then. So she's an 87 year old lady yep. and basically for the last two months she's had black uh, toes. She's only just fessed up to her family about it. Um, she doesn't have any known medical conditions, only sees her doctor for flu jabs once a year. Yeah, doesn't she's 87. Take regular medication and she's 87. Wow. That's about it. I wasn't really sure what else was. No, that's okay. So what do you think is going on? I mean, it sounds like a vascular issue. Yeah. Dr Mullen and student Dr Stanley head down to see the 87-year-old patient and her family. Hello. Hello. OK. I'm Jake. I'm one of the emergency medicine doctors. Um, so, I've been hearing a bit from Stan about what's been going on. Um, he mentioned that you notice your toes are black. When, when did that first happen? Two months ago. Two months ago? Did it happen all of a sudden or has it just been gradual? No, just gradual. What happened? I was putting my toenail and it broke. Yeah. And I just put me. Fair enough. So Stan was saying you're a bit you're a bit stoic. You don't see uh, you don't see the doctor out very often. Is that right? Well, there's nothing wrong with me, and I don't go. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I have a look at your feet? Is that all right? Thank you. Anything else that you either of you think is worth adding? Okay, well, I can't fix being stubborn. <laughs> Got through 87 years of it. I think that's. I think I'm going to change that. All right, let's have a look. As soon as I, I took those stockings off, my heart sunk. This lady's feet are in really poor condition. Um, the toes are, frankly, necrotic. Um, for lack of a better word, they are rotting. Um, and this is progressing up from the, the bottom of the toe upwards. OK, and this one's actually more swollen than this one. This one isn't too bad. Dr Mullen needs to figure out if there's any other affected areas. So, have you got pain? Do you get pain in your legs at all? No, not in my legs, just my feet. Do you get pain in your feet? All the time, or just when you're doing anything? Mostly all the time. Have you noticed that you get any sharp breath? No. No? OK. I've noticed your hands look a little bit purple as well. Is that something that's happened recently, or has that been a while? Yeah, a couple of days. Right? How long has that been going on for? Yeah, been about the same. Think about the same, or, or longer? The situation for this patient is serious. The next few hours will be crucial. At Barnsley Casualty, okay. after a fall left 90-year-old Alan with a deep facial wound, he's had a CT scan and X-ray to make sure he isn't suffering from a brain trauma injury or fractures to the face. There we go. Over in the hub... So I have both of his scans back. Dr Roy, who's been overseeing Alan's care, is assessing his results. So just here, this is what we're looking for. We're looking to see if there's any break in the bone, essentially. And we're looking for any asymmetry. So this is where he's having his laceration across this eyebrow over here. And he's got bruising all over here and reduced sensation here. But if you can see, if you follow the contour of the bone, there's actually no break there, so he doesn't really have a fracture there. And it looks pretty symmetrical on both sides. With no signs of a fracture or a bleed on the brain, Dr Roy pays a visit to Alan. Hello, my love. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, OK. Yeah. In pain? Just aching a little bit. Aching. OK. So, we've had a look at your x-ray and your head scan. There's no fractures there and there's no bleed in your brain, so it's all good. OK? So but we do need to get this closed, right? I can't do it here, you need to be seen by special surgeons. So now you need to go to Sheffield, to Hallamshire Hospital, where they will see you and close you up. Tonight? Yeah. 
So it's going to be a bit of a wait, but we want to get this sorted sooner rather than later, don't we? Yeah. Alan's son Gary took him to the Royal Hallamshire in Sheffield, where he received ten stitches. Thank you. He's now back at home safe and sound. And in the hub, things are finally looking up for Sister Jo. Waiting time, just over two hours, so uh, we managed to uh, to turn that round a little bit. Seven hours, 52 minutes this, uh, this morning at uh, half seven when we took over. So they've managed to turn it round despite being shorter medical staff as well, so it's a good outcome really. We've got some cubicle space now. We've not got loads of ambulances waiting to hand over, so it's a... Uh, not a bad, uh, bad position. Which means one thing for her. I'm having to ask Katie to take over from me so I can put my red dot on my, uh, on my name. Can I get my break in peace? In cubicle five, Dr Mullen is assessing a patient whose toes have become necrotic due to the lack of blood flow. Her family have rushed her into casualty, having only just found out. So what I'm going to do, we're going to take some bloods and refer you to the medical team. Although I think this has been going on for a while, we need to get on top of it. So ultimately what you need is input from the vascular surgeons. They might need to do some scans of your arteries to look at the state of them and see if there's anything you can do. Dr Mullen gives student Dr Stanley the job of taking the patient's blood while he goes to call the vascular team to discuss the next step. Basically, both of her big toes have gone completely black and she's got some uh, necrotic regions in her web spaces as well between a few of her toes. Um, she's basically just kept it secret and presented today. The vascular team need to see the patient face to face to assess her properly. Thank you, cheers. Ultimately, we're working in A&E and &E and we have only got that snapshot from straight away. Um, so I need to keep that clear that I can only really tell you what's going to happen in the next 24 hours and give you a general idea of the rest of it. So obviously this is, you know, this is serious. Looking at these toes, the areas that are black are the, the dead, okay? Um, what's going to happen is, I think most likely is they will, on, of their own volition, it will eventually, the dead, st the dead tissue will just fall off basically. Okay, the most likely cause is that you've got plaques in your arteries. As you get older, everyone gets them. As they progress, um, they can stop the circulation getting to your feet. And that's probably what's been causing your pain. And your feet are the most, you know, the furthest part of your body away from your heart. So it's the hardest part for your, the blood to get to. When I'm breaking bad news, I really try to be frank with patients and, and, and give it to them straight, because I think most people do appreciate that. My job's really just to give them those red flags. The patient was taken on by the vascular team. Unfortunately, the circulation in her lower legs was so poor, she had to have them amputated from above the knee. I've worked in uh, Yorkshire for six years now, and I've got a, a good feel for the sort of classic Yorkshireman or, or woman who just... Um, my heart breaks for them because they just often don't come in because they don't want to bother us. By the time they've come to us, sometimes it's a little bit too late. I think the lessons we can learn generally are to attend the doctors when you notice a problem to prevent problems happening in the future. Thank you, bye. After a difficult shift, it's time to go home for Sister Jo. All right, catch you later. And for Dr Mullen, it's a time to reflect. After a tough shift, if I've seen some things that I'd rather forget, I just have to decompress in the car journey on the way home, um, get home and then, and then hold my son, really. And over time, you get better at just uh, trying to process it. But no matter how hard the day has been, the staff on shift are always ready, willing and able to help the patients at Barnsley Casualty. See ya. See ya.